Claude what now? <laughs> Claude what? Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Happy day. Oh, happy I'm not, day. I'm not joining in on this. When internet historian washed, I washed my sins away. Oh, happy day. I'm so excited. It's been a minute. It's been a, a minute? minute. It's been months. A minute. Yeah. It's been months. An internet historian has been MIA, nowhere to be found, bringing my emotions down. I'm sure he's busy doing shit like this. Well, I'm glad because he's back and he's dropped a video called I Am Become Fancy Theater. I didn't even read it that way and this came out like two days ago. I Am Become Fancy. I just read like I become... (laughs) I became fans. I don't even know what I read, really. Well, it's a beautiful thing. I'll have you know that. Because Internet Historian, one of my favorite content creators of all time, um, you know, anytime he drops a video, it is funny as fuck. And I'm ready to cry laughing, to crap my pants and pee on myself. And um, yeah, there's going to be liquid coming from all orifices. Oh my god. So I'm either going to be laughing or cringing. You just never know. You really don't. You never know. Yeah. You don't. But what you do know is it's, you know, it's going to be fucking, it's going to be something else. Um, what's your favorite so far? I don't even know. I would have to really think about it. For me, it's the... He will kinda not like, divide us. I was going to say, I kind of just mixed them all together in my oh, brain. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to, like, pick out what was what. Oh. Uh, yeah, the, the he will not divide oh, us. No, the the Harry Potter ones. The skirmish. Oh, the Harry yeah, Potter yeah. Skirmish. My Immortal. Yeah, yeah, that's for the sure. The Harry Potter skirmishes? Is that the same thing? No, that's where the people were, like, leaking what happens in the book. Oh, no, that's not my favorite one. Yeah. My Immortal. My Immortal is the one you're thinking about. I can't remember if it was the first one or the second one. And I was crying. I don't think I've ever laughed so hard (laughs) on this channel. I was crying. Oh, it was funny. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, I think that the He Will Not Divide Us series of videos was probably my favorite. I I was a theater kid. Nikki was not a theater kid. No. Um, but I, I thought I was going to major in theater in college. I didn't know when that. I first went, yeah. I was thinking about it. Um, but I did hey, a whole good at it. Where lot. Going, buddy? Where are you going? I did a whole lot of um, theater stuff. And, you know, there's all kinds of theater people. Um, and most of them that I've met, I've not liked. Yes. There's a lot of them that are hard to handle. You're not getting on the TV, so she... I got into theater because it was something that I got put into when I was really young. And it just kind of felt like a comfortable place for me. Um, and it's fun. It's like playing pretend, but like really seriously. Yeah, I mean, I think that I would have liked it if I was put into like those camps and stuff yeah. that you went to when you were a kid. But I just never had anything like that. You know, like I went to like 4-H camp. Yeah. And that was it. But, um, like, whenever you get into musical theater and, like, very serious fucking Shakespeare and, like, really serious stuff that's not just about entertaining a crowd, but it's like, the craft of theater on serious bullshit, it's kind of, like, annoying as fuck and pretentious. And I don't like it. Yeah. Because it just is so, like, stick up your ass, like... Yeah. Posh, not cool. Um, but you know, I've seen some Broadway that was badass. Wicked was the fucking shit. Hairspray, when I saw it, was fucking awesome. Like, there's a level that theater gets to with, like, the stage production and the quality of the actors and everything that's undeniably badass. I just really don't like the elitist yeah. mentality that surrounds the whole deal. Yeah, it's super entertaining. I remember the first time we were going on a field trip. Um, I can't remember which one we watched first. I would imagine 
So I, I watched two when I was in school. It was Dracula and then um, Sleeping Beauty. And I guess it was Sleeping Beauty first because had I watched Dracula first, I would have been like, oh, hell yeah, because it was really cool. But we, they were like, we're going to go watch Sleeping Beauty. And I was like, I literally, well, I'm not, I, I'm not allowed to say what I actually felt like on the internet. <laughs> I did not want to go. I did not want to go at all. Nikki. And I was just like, this is going to be the Why are you so rude? shit that I've Why ever so seen. Rude? I hate musicals. And then I went and I was like, oh my god, I loved it so much. <laughs> I had such a good time. Yeah. I shit on everything until I try it and then I'm like, oh. It was actually good. Maybe I do like that, or no, somebody I really clip don't like that, that part where she goes, "I shit on everything." <laughs> we'll just upload that as a short and see if anybody has anything to say about it. Um, so yeah, internet historian doing his goddamn thing. I am looking forward to checking this one out. All right, you ready? Go. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll see. Yeah, okay, let's do it. Brought to you by NordVPN. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Look at you. Uncultured. <laughs> unsophisticated. <laughs> Middle class. Oh, God. I mean, that would be at no, best. Don't speak. You'll just make me throw up. I'd say cover up with this dinner jacket, but I'm afraid that you'd get your head stuck in the sleeve and asphyxiate. Help, I'm stuck. <laughs> Listen, lowball. Don't you want to be refined? <laughs> don't you want to be fancy? Like moi? That's French. <laughs> I don't expect you to know what it means. But I have some good news. Before this financial year ends, I have decided to make a charitable deduction. It's you, champ! For you see, I... Or we can have premarital oh, sex! Oh, this virus. Oh, that's I have made X. several videos, though. Which will show you how to bluff your way you to the that. inner circle. Yes, I did. <laughs> Undetected. Yes. Here's By how the I know, because they're on a spaceship, right? Uh-huh. And Jason always kills the fornicators who are like... Yeah. You we're know, like the deviant... First ones. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, deviant sex havers, because he can't be having that, because he doesn't like deviant sex havers. Or, but there's like... Is it because he's you know, a like, beast? You know, like in... Um, Star Trek, how they have the hollow deck. Yeah. So it's like the hollow deck thing where they've got like camp girls, you know, and Jason goes in there and he like puts them in their sleeping bags and's like beating them against trees and stuff. And then I'm pretty sure where they're just like hollow deck people, it doesn't do anything. Right. And he's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Now, I haven't seen this since I'm like. 11 or something. I distinctly so, remember that. No, scene. I'm just saying, like, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure I'm right that that's from Jason X. Um, and I'm going to get you to turn it down just a little bit. Okay, that's fine. Sensitive ears. Um, but I think they show boobs or something. That's where it sticks it in my memory. It checks yeah. out that Jason would show boobs. Yes. But anyway, that scene is from Jason X. Anyway, Jason goes to space. I've watched it, but it was also on the Sci-Fi channel. So I don't know if they censored that. Probably. Yeah. Anyway. I'm the Elite's Find Out. Neon Genesis Evangelion is psychological and intense. It will be too late. I get you in, you eat all the hors d'oeuvres, and we get out. That's the plan. And let's begin your instruction with... Theater. Theater. The YouTube premium of upper society. <laughs> and the first section... Symphony. The first period of performance, that's called Baroque. From 1600 to 1750. This featured Bach and Vivaldi. Now, there was also a guy named Giuseppe Tartini, and he was the best one of them all, because mm. one evening he had a dream where the devil showed up and presented oh him with a deal. <laughs> oh, God. The devil would become his teacher and impart on him everything he knew about music. How to do yes. the bass. Once drop Tartini had learned everything he could, he handed over his violin and asked the devil to play. 
The Devil Played, the greatest musical piece that Tartini had ever heard. <gasps> Tartini woke up with a gasp, and he tried to recreate what he had heard in the dream. And what he wrote down was his most famous piece, the best thing he had ever written. And he said, this is shite compared to the original. <laughs> this is nothing better than a tribute. And that's where you get the Tenacious D song uh... from. He named this piece The Devil's Trill. And he claimed that the difference between his version and the version in the dream was so great that he would have smashed his violin and quit music forever Damn. had he not needed it for his job. Classical, 1750 to 1830. Mozart and Beethoven show up like da 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 da. Now, Beethoven was famously known for going deaf. Once that happened, everyone told him that he should just quit music forever. But he just wouldn't hear it. Anyway, there's so much I could say about these two. Uh, Romantic era. <laughs> now that's when everybody started kissing, and it's my favorite. Great piece. Mwah. Oh, you played wonderfully too. Mwah. We also enjoyed listening. Mwah. Mwah, 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 mwah. All you need to know about this one is Chopin and Berlioz. Berlioz, however, was not getting any kisses. He was relatably painfully single, living alone in Paris, the city of love. God, that so would suck. here's how it started. He's there and he's in his early 20s and he is looking for a new GF. So one day like it, he attends there. a Shakespearean play and on stage he spots an actress and he immediately falls in love with her. He wrote her many notes confessing his love, she but said, her DMs down. went unreplied. So he began writing a symphony about her. Ah, how can she ignore this? And also around this time, he started smoking a lot of opium, but don't there worry about that. Go. Anyway, so he wrote this piece just for her. However, his DM still went unreplied. For several months, he started to get quite disheartened. <sighs> Until he saw another girl. So he immediately fell in love with her instead. And he said, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to change that symphony I wrote. So now it's about this other lady and not about that ugly one that I didn't like anyway. This grapes. time, happily, she reciprocated, and they fell in love and were set to marry. Da, 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 but the other okay, girl... Phones haven't been invented yet. Yes, hello. I'm busy. Oh, Rome? To study? Absolutely. I'll catch the first flight out. So Berlioz went to Rome to study music. However, while he was away, he got some news. Mm. Berlioz, I have to tell you something. Jeez. Sacre bleu. What? Some other, more handsome musician oh. swooped in and married his girl while he was in Rome and they ran away together. Berlioz was furious and he set his mind to solving the problem. I know what I'm going to do. This is how my chemical romance started. I'm gonna murder her and her lover. Okay, that's not the and answer. And a mom. And then I'm gonna do a self-murder. Yeah, Alright, so this gets answer. pretty elaborate. His idea is to dress up as a housemaid. <laughs> he has bought both poison and two guns. <laughs> now he is going to sneak into the house of his ex fiance and there missing. she and her mother will be sipping tea, Why which he has already poisoned. <laughs> then he will pull off the clothing and reveal himself. Blam, blam, <laughs> sad overture. So he heads back home to Paris to do it. But while on his travels oh. there, you know, it takes quite a while, he, gets in a he has to change action. carriages. And when he does that, he Luggage. leaves the guns in one of the little cubbies. Thank God. So he's lost all his weapons. Good. What is he going to do now? Buy another one. Well, his next leg on the stop is Genoa. And he decides, you know what? Let's just skip the murder and go <laughs> straight to the finale. Well, I so mean, he stops off in the port city of Genoa. And he's there thing. at the side of the Mediterranean. He pauses for a moment. Then he throws himself in. Now, some people see this whole thing happen, and they think he's had an accident, so they run in to try to save him. They pull him to the shore. 
He lived. So he has now reached his lowest point. He dejectedly continues home. Mm. He gets back to Paris and he wallows around, feeling pretty sorry for himself. But he decides, Damn. You know what? I may as well do what I do best in times of trouble. He grabs the lotion. Smoke a lot of opium. (laughs) And while I do that, I shall write a symphony. Although I ain't going to name it after that hoe who (laughs) stole my heart. And so he went back to work. But here's the thing. It was the greatest piece he had ever written. And it premiered to a huge crowd. And you know what? It was a smash hit. Number one on iTunes. But then, and here's a bloody plot twist. Remember the first girl? Oh my God. She finally wrote Well, she attended that concert and she realized that Berlioz was a genius. And then she wrote a letter to your boy saying how good your bloody symphony was and sorry about not (laughs) replying. I just put my phone down and got super busy or whatever. Uh... By the way, I love you. And so Berlioz goes, well, I love you too. And a year later, they were married. Ah, it's a beautiful moral of the story. See, fellas, don't jump in the Mediterranean. Anyway, a few years later, they got divorced because weirdly, he cheated on his wife with the housemaid. Not that one, a different one. (laughs) But then he married that housemaid. Hooray. But then when he died later on, for some reason, he gets buried with both of them. Dude, that is pimp. But uh, moving on on to the Impressionist. As a woman, after hearing this man's story, that ending is pretty boss. As a as a woman, as, yeah. No, no, did they know that they were both going to be buried with Look, him? Nobody asked their opinion on this. Exactly. <laughs> Musicians. Now that's Claude. De... <laughs> De what now? Claude. De what? <laughs> you know what? You better go. And a year later, they oh, were no. married. Ah, oh, it's a beautiful moral of the story. See, fellas, don't jump in the Mediterranean. Anyway, a few years later, they got divorced because, weirdly, he cheated on his wife with the housemaid. Not that one. A different one. But then he married that housemaid. Hooray. What are you missing? But then when he died later on, for some reason, he gets buried with both of them. His ex-wife. Strange. But uh, moving on to the Impressionist musicians. Now that's Claude de... (laughs) De what now? Claude de what... What? You know what? You better go to ad time. All right, guys. Welcome back to the Nord Stream. Us. Come on. Today we're listen. playing Assassin's Creed 3. Chat, chat. Come on, chat, chat, chat. Hey, oh, everyone's spamming Nord in the chat. Whoa, a new follower. Hey, welcome to the Dream Team Sub Cream. Uh, thank you so much for the great to see. Oh, unfollowed. Oh. Sorry, guys. The cleaners are here. Sorry, just <laughs> just ignore the mess. I just I haven't cleaned up these bottles yet. No, it's it's just tea. This it's is like just my tea. Stream. Just tea. Oh just no! Tea. <sighs> I just I stream for ten hours a day, and it's like the algorithm is against me or something. How come everyone is watching Asmon stream and I'm not getting any new followers? I'm playing the games. What more do you want me to do? Is he trying to act like DSP right Just a there? quick word from the sponsor. NordVPN is the VPN that you can trust. So go to nordvpn.com slash internet historian for a huge deal on a two-year plan plus four bonus months for free plus a 30-day money-back guarantee. Oh my God. Man. Today we are going to be watching the new Snow White movie. <laughs> I love the intro. Oh, I love seeing that Disney logo. That's brilliant. That's oh no! Brilliant. Guys, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna Are get up and get some the Daily food. Wire I'll, be one? I'll be back in a minute. It is. Yes, they fucking are. Oh no! What the fuck? Who reported my stream? <laughs> Hello, my Nordlings. Welcome back to the stream. Can we get some ends in the chat, guys? No, not like that. <laughs> Mods, mods. Welcome back to the uh, oh, no. ASMR stream <laughs> for NordVPN. Today I'm going to be drinking a can of Coke <laughs> while I say the word Nord. Ah, Nord. Hey, thank you for the tier three sub. <laughs> With no 
would be bien. I can be outside my house, Jack's Films house, yes. Samito's house, yeah. Ordinary Things house. Just like that. Welcome back to the hot tub stream. Ooh. What do you guys mean? How many hot dogs can I put in my mouth? <laughs> Why? I'll just... Oh my god, $5,000 donation. Thank you so much. You guys are such good friends. Streaming's not for me. I'd rather go to nordvpn.com slash internet historian to get a huge deal on a two-year plan plus four months for free. For free. And over. <laughs> Watching Netflix, are you? How many hot dogs can you stick in your mouth, babe? <laughs> All tucked in with a three-hour essay on Good Game Good, and here's why. Fallout New Vegas <laughs> is actually the only base Bethesda game. Turn that off. I've got something for you much less enjoyable, and far more expensive. We're going to the theater. Pull it together, Theater. Babe. From the ancient <laughs> oh, Greek, Theatron. The most dramatic of the Transformers. Oh, it means a place for viewing. <laughs> Here's a Roman theatre. They were quite simple back then. You have the stage, the auditorium, and the vomitorium. Now, for a very long time, people thought that the vomitorium was a place where the Romans would gorge themselves, where they would eat so much that they would throw up and then gorge themselves again because they were so decadent and or the limit. But it comes from the word vomir, which means to spew forth, because that's where people go in and out. So vomitorium is just a dramatic way of saying the entrance. Now, if you skip forward to the 1800s, things are getting a lot more modernized, but they still didn't have electric. So they had what's called the limelight. And that's why they say to be in the limelight, to be the star of the show. What they would do was take a piece of quick lime and heat it up super, super hot, which will naturally glow very bright. They would then take reflective mirrors and lenses to focus the beam, and they would use that as an early form of the spotlight. The limelight is not because it's green, but because it's made from quicklime. In the modern day, things are a lot more advanced, and they can do all sorts of cool shit with, like, lasers going into your eyeballs and all sorts of stuff. But it's not just the tech that's had an upgrade, it's the architecture as well. In Elizabethan times, they had the yard, and you could get in here for about a penny a piece. And this is where all the poor people stood to watch the shows. It's like when you go to Oppenheimer and you end up with the worst seats in the IMAX theatre, right? But thankfully, in modern times, we have fixed that problem. We kicked out all the poor people and we sunk the floor down low oh, wow. and put in an orchestra pit. Now, these things are usually 6 to 12 feet deep, so they're not obstructing the audience's view. But having a giant hole at the end of a stage is quite dangerous. Yep. So usually it they happens. put a big net there as well. And yet, a lot of people still get pitted. Like a lot of people. In 2011, during a production of The Sound of Music, one of the lead actresses fell into the orchestra pit and was left paralyzed from the waist down. In 2009, a conductor, not a superconductor, just a regular one, <laughs> fell 14 feet into the dark pit and broke nine vertebrae and one ankle. Mamma mia. What a and he mommy. fell on his pointy ah! conducting thing. At the Bolshoi Theatre, a violinist died from his injuries after falling into the pit. They need, like, this theatre is prone to all sorts of accidents, by the way. It's kind of cursed. But performers and musicians aren't the only ones falling into the pit. In 1988, an 82-year-old man fell from his balcony box seating all the way down into the pit during a performance of Macbeth. He died. Very spooky. Even already dead people are getting pitted. In 2016, a man sprinkled his friend's ashes into the orchestra pit at the Met Theatre. This happened during the intermission, and it was a sort of tribute to a mentor of his. But of course, people went, what the hell are you yeah, doing? Kinda... And he goes, yeah. oh, I don't know. And he flees the scene. <laughs> Everyone's coughing and sneezing up dead guy. And people think, is this anthrax? What is this? So they call in the anti-terrorism police, and the whole show is cancelled for the rest of the evening. Oh, they got swatted in the theater, dude. No. <laughs> a quick intermission. Or is it? 
Ooh, Finity D. I am the Trap Master. Uh, not like that. Do not ask me to reveal my secrets, woman. I have dedicated my life to the mysteries of the theater. Oh, the theater. She has so many enigmatic traps. Let us start with the most simple, yet devious, the wall trap. It allows the actor to walk directly into the set piece. Ah, where did he go? Nobody knows. Cast your eyes over here to the genie trap. Now the victim stands on this dumbwaiter and a counterweight launches their hapless body up onto the stage. Whish! <laughs> In the olden days, this circle of flaps would sometimes go on top, and then that would make the whole thing just one way. Now, back when they made this thing, they didn't have hydraulics. So instead, they'd have like six stagehands pulling as fast as they could. Man, and sometimes it would go totally wonky, or it wouldn't open properly, or they'd only get about halfway through. Oh, oh yeah. well, I guess that's it. There's only two. <laughs> Wrong! This is the vampire trap. <laughs> and if I want to come back up again, this is called the sunroof trap. Very cool. Watch out for the closing doors on this one. It managed to trap Spider-Man's foot back into production in 2013. I didn't think he was gonna say foot. Me and the Green Goblin, we collabed on this one. All right, there's one more. The ghost glide. What you do is stand on this slidey bit, and it ascends diagonally, which makes it look like he's coming out of the ground. Diagonally. But the ladies are there yawning, and they're going, ooh, short ghost. But then... Five foot, five foot one, five foot two. All the ladies are turning their heads now. Five foot three, five foot four, five foot five. All the ladies are loving it. Now, I bet you're wondering, what happens to the actors when they go down these traps? Are they dead and gone forever? Yes. Yes, sometimes. <laughs> In 1888, oh, Frederick Federici was playing the role of Mephistopheles in Faust at the Princess Theatre in Melbourne. As he descended the trap at the end of the play, goodbye everybody, goodbye, he had a heart attack and died. Never seen again. It's not really the... So as you can imagine, with this many deaths, the theatre has become a highly haunted place. Oh yeah. I've heard a lot of theatre. In lines. fact, sometimes you can put your ear right up to the wall and you can hear two male ghosts wrestling. Can't fake that. <laughs> ah, another ghost hole. Don't look inside. <laughs> I did once. Almost went blind. That's why I wear the mask. Anyway, because of all the ghosts, the theatres do whatever they can to keep the spirits happy. <laughs> See this? It's called a ghost light. When everything is closed, it is kept on always. Kept on for the ghosts, so that they don't you know, bump their shins in the dark or whatever. At the Palace Theatre in London, there has been some ghostly activity. It seems to be bit of a hot spot for ghostly activities. And that's why they always keep two empty seats at the back so that the ghosts may sit there and watch the show. Mm. So that's why we traditionally kept a couple of seats off sale for the ghosts. However, Harry Potter is so popular that we, we sell those seats now. Oh. Also, most theatres close for one day per week. And on those days, the ghosts are left to perform for each other in their own shows. Which they like, we think. We think. I was worried about my own vagina. It oh, finally, project. the vagina monologues. Oh, a culture of other vagi <gasps> You know, I wasn't always part of the elite. In fact, from a very young age, I grew up in an orphanage. No, no, my parents weren't dead. Rent in that building was just really cheap. <laughs> but my parents showed me no affection. And as soon as they could, they sent me off to boarding school. But boards were always their passion, not mine. I tried to run away, but they caught me. And boy, did they throw the book at me. Alas, I did not dodge in time. I spent the next few years in a coma. <laughs> A Native American town, Pueblo Acoma. Oh. And the people there taught me how to read American. They also had a local library, 
and I spent my days buried, buried in books, learning as much as I could about the arts. And once someone noticed me buried under those books and they rescued me. I knew I wanted to teach default character presets like yourselves, all about Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Here is his note. I started Googling Shakespeare and I got kind of distracted. So, I don't know, here's, here's a wave file. You can do something with this. I'll put him in like a classroom or something. All right, attention, everybody. I am your new teacher. You are a bunch of troubled inner city youths. All you know is shoot gun, fail test, oh. and crime. But I'm here to teach you that actually, books and reading and stuff are actually pretty epic movies? after all. So many movies. Yeah. Now, the one. earliest known written language is what, Mr. Single Parent Household? <laughs> I don't know, teach, but you're never going to get through to me. Oh, really? Well, what if I go back in time? Back in time. <laughs> in the long, long ago, very few could read. But to be fair, most of the written languages were kind of shit. This is cuneiform, the very first written language. And it has far too much punctuation. Then eventually came along the Egyptians, and they invented emojis. Nice. But they would call them hieroglyphs. Anyway, the typical written thing would go like this. A uh, message for you, sir. Big bird, man with stick, man setting, circle. Oh, more bills. <laughs> da, 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 da. Eventually that became quite annoying. So the Phoenicians, who were a kind of Lebanese, hmm, very progressive, especially <laughs> for those days. Now, they came up with a better idea. <laughs> they started going, ah. Hey, that sounds a bit like an A. Buh. That sounds a bit like a B. Cool. And so on and so on. Until we had a proto form of the alphabet. Now, the Greeks thought that was pretty neato, but they said, let's come up with an even better version with 22 letters, and soon that will be like English. Oh, oral history. Oh, 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 Greeks more like geeks. Oh, got them. Oh, yeah? Well, let me tell you about something highly relatable. Of the surviving Greek works, the greatest hits were the Iliad and the Odyssey. Now, because most people couldn't read, hey, hey, this stuff wasn't written down for a very long time. And instead, it was memorized and performed. And when they performed it, they used one of these, a lyre. Now, this was great for conveying tone, right? So, here's a soft bit, doo -doo -doo. but then this is a big dramatic bit. Dun -dun 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 -dun. <laughs> now, the Iliad starts with this guy, Menelaus, king of Sparta, and he has a wife, Helen, and she is a very fine lady. And then the Prince of Troy shows up. His name is Paris, and he goes, damn shorty, a wooga, a wooga. Hey, hey, that's what he'd say, right? And he and his boys abduct her and took her all the way back to his crib in Troy. Now this makes Menelaus quite miffed. Hey, hey, hold on there, Buster. He declares a turf war, but he can't win it alone. So he calls on his homies, Odysseus, king of Ithaca, and Achilles, the best drive-by shooter of all time. <laughs> But Achilles is not in the mood to fight. So the whole of the Iliad is basically spent trying to convince this guy to get involved. Please? No. Please? No. Eventually, they win the turf war by being very sneaky. They make a giant horse, which is the symbol of Troy, and they leave it at the front gate. That's their way of saying, Oh, oh I guess you win. We're walking away now. And meanwhile, thousands of soldiers go off and hide in some bushes. Oh my God. Now, the Trojans are very suspicious, but they can see that the Greek ships are actually sailing away into the horizon. So they know, oh, it must be real, must be real. We've won, we've won the many years war. Oh, yeah. But actually, there's almost no one on those ships and there's a surprise inside the horse. Later that night, when everyone's asleep, psh, boiling hot set seeky everywhere. And also some soldiers wearing thermal protection. They get out and they open the gates and then everyone comes out of the bushes running into the city and kill everybody. After they win the war, Odysseus heads back home to Ithaca. However, on his way, he starts making beef with Poseidon, god of the sea. And Poseidon is mad at the disrespect. So he sends Odysseus on a long ass detour. And that detour is the story of the Odyssey. Pretty epic, right kids? 
Teach, that's fire. I'm starting to come around. That Odysseus guy is literally me. Yeah, I'm gonna try that horse trick on my ops. Homer from Homer's Odyssey is not a character <laughs> in the story. He's the guy who tells the story, and then people wrote it down. Now moving chronologically to the next big one, you've got the Bible. And for all practical purposes, this was basically an oral tradition too. Most people were illiterate by this point, and the Bible was written in Latin, and pretty much only the clergy knew Latin, so they would be the one to recite it to people. It says that the cute lady at the front should go on a date with me, please. <laughs> Listen, the rules are the rules I didn't say at the book did. There was a translated version into English, <laughs> the Wycliffe's Bible. And you better believe that thing was a threat to the order. So they made that illegal to own. What? And if you were found with an unlicensed copy, the punishment would be death. So it remained. The Bible was read to the people. Now, by the 1300s came Chaucer, who wrote the Canterbury Tales. And that was a pretty big deal. Get this. Book now. <laughs> because it's one of the first significant works written in Middle English. It describes a bunch of people making a pilgrimage from Southwark to Canterbury, which is here to here, which was the longest journey anyone had ever made in the 1300s. And now, it's a whole series of stories, and most of them can be boiled down to how come if everyone is on a pilgrimage, you're all so focused on material stuff? Oh, hypocrites much? Dong. It's now the 1600s, and they've updated all the textbooks from Middle English to regular. In 1601, King James I said, All right, you know what? Let's everyone have a copy of the Bible they can read. Let's do a King James Bible. I won't feature in it, but I'd love to be in the title. <laughs> and he commissioned a committee of scholars to rewrite the thing in English. God's language. Hey. It took eight years. And that brings us to Shakespeare. And he's a huge deal. Oh, look, we're out of time. Oh, oh, but sir, oh, but sir, we're supposed to do penis inspection day today. <laughs> no, no, there's no time. Roll the end card. The end. <laughs> All right, that's the lesson. You watched the whole video, or at least you had it on in the background while you scrolled your phone. And I couldn't be prouder of you. There's just one more quick thing I want to tell you about. Theatre props. For example, this gun. Now, the thing... Oh, look oh, who it is. Oh, no! <laughs> I know what you're thinking, but it's just an actor. We all know that the real Lincoln is dead. Well, you know, when he fell asleep on the tracks of the Underground Railroad. Anyway, what? this thing's super realistic. Although the trigger is a little loose. <laughs> Rot row. <laughs> oh, I can't believe you did that. But I won't tell anyone. In, uh, you know, in fact, good news. I'm going to make you my little protege. And I will be your protojo. <laughs> and I got so many more lessons to teach. Wow. Still here. Oh my yes, just God. a little cleaning. More good news. Uh, Next video is almost done. It'll be on incognito mode and it's about the art. And the next main channel video is also nearly done. That'll be out shortly after. If you're looking for more content in the meanwhile, we have another channel called Story Mode. Story Mode. The Metal Gear Solid and Forspoken videos are especially good. Don't forget NordVPN. Thank you for watching. More soon. God, I, I, that, this video almost killed me. Oh yeah, no, I know. Holy shit. The, the NordVPN. The NordVPN ads always get me. Yeah. Always. Nordman is too much. Way too much. Um, did you learn anything? I knew pretty much all of that. Um, I didn't know that it took eight years to like rewrite. Translate yeah. the King James version. Yeah, I didn't know that. And yeah. I feel like at least like the end the little bit, the parts that were true, I feel like, yeah. you know, if I would have learned history like that, then maybe I would have. And like I, say that all, I say that all the time. I maybe would have retained a small chunk of it. Yeah. Rather than just being in class like, oh my God, I cannot, like, I can't. It's like trying to read 
the Bible at the first, and it's like uh -huh. just names over and over oh, and over yeah. for like three pages. I'm like, hey, I, I can't do this. <sighs> yeah, that's true. I th now, there's a ceiling fan above us, and I think the little dangly parts. Oh my God, did he just fart? I hope not. I don't. I can't. I, I smell something that smell like I shit. Mean, he's close to your face. It's either your breath or his ass owl. I don't know which one. <laughs> Yeah, dude, this video was fucking hilarious. Like, that shit there was, was so, so much, funny. Like, even in the beginning, it was a, a little bit of a, a longer video. Um, so... There was the part about the trap doors, and they were like, Oh, no, he got his foot caught. I thought Spider-Man caught something else. Oh, his schlong? In. Or his nads? The first, the first one. His yeah. web slinger? Yeah. Good God. Yeah. No. I don't know why I instantly was like, oh God, and then he was like, his foot. And I was like, why was I thinking about... I mean, that would be a knee slapper to like be hanging to get caught in the damn before his foot would. It probably... Oh. <laughs> well, I thought if you were falling like, like this, Good God, that like, would be like... How do you think you smuggle a hog that size in a <laughs> spotty suit? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't think about it. What the hell? Nikki's I guess not I just in the buff. I guess just... I just instantly to like the worst thing that could have happened. It doesn't even make any sense. Like I had no idea penis was on your mind like that. I mean, if you're falling like backwards Nikki, and like your leg, your there limbs is are no dangly. that does not make any logical sense. You just had penis on your mind. All right, his hog. I hate that so much. I um, hate that. What about this guy who was on his way to like assassinate his? Lover and her oh, yeah, new boyfriend. Oh yeah, I forgot that story because of all well, the other information. I just feel like it's kind of convenient that he just he forgets. Like, if you're intent on like that's what you're doing, maybe you're like, just gonna leave your fault. weapons. Like maybe, maybe somebody else was supposed to be in charge of his bags or something like that. I just I think I he was kind of like an emo little bitch. Yeah. And, and was why is he like, gonna kill her mama too? Like and was she like, didn't have he anything. Was, he was just like, I just want to sound cool about like what I was getting ready to do, but really he was like, I ain't gonna fucking fuck this. I ain't gonna do it. I don't know. I think it's yeah. a weird like we. This has been brought up in another reaction. I just think it's such a weird thought that that's what you were gonna do. The second thing, that's on your own terms. First thing, don't be doing that. Kind of hammered. But yeah, I think he I definitely, was just... I definitely agree. And then, and then he, he finally got with the first woman who was like, oh shit, like, you do check out. You do seem cool. Like, let's hang out. Okay, let's get married. But I'm going to be with the maid too. Dude, what about the vomitorium thing? That to I me, have like, heard that. I have too, but I've heard both things. And I just thought that they were like both kind of true. Like the same place where everybody was leaving. They were puking. They were like going out the door and like. Because they were so yeah, like full, drunk or something. Or whatever. But uh, turns out like that wasn't true, which is fine by me. I'm yeah. glad. It makes sense for it to be the place where people go in and out and shit. Like that, that totally makes sense to me that they would use the same vermage, vermage, verbiage. <laughs> <laughs> for like spewing in and out like that yeah. that told because it looks like that when people a whole crowd of people comes out of a, yeah. a space or like you're going to like a pro sports game people are all in the stadium it looks like that yeah it doesn't make sense that you would just gorge yourself have you ever been to golden corral <laughs> dude i yes. shit you not there was a time where a family member of mine went to a restaurant that was all you could eat with me and my family and purposefully went to the bathroom to vomit so they could eat more food. That's just what, did they have Like a, exactly what they were saying wait, these people were doing, this person was doing. Did they have a history doing. of doing that regularly no, anyway? They no. just wanted to get their money's worth. Yeah, and this person's parent was like... What the fuck is wrong with you? No, like proud of this. <laughs> They were like... Do I, am I thinking of the same person? I, I will tell you. I but they were like, he hey, he he likes this stuff. He's getting his money worth out of this. See, okay. And it's like... As as a pr growing up pretty what? poor, that's even extreme. Because like we would go to like a Chinese buffet or something. And like my dad would be like, okay, 
Like, I challenge all of you. Like, I'm going to win. Right. But I challenge all of you to try to see if you just can eat more plates. Eat more plates than I yeah. can. And nobody ever could. I'd eat, like, two plates and be like, I just, I, I physically cannot do and this. And this is America. Um, yeah. That, but that, that is a real life experience that I've. Yeah. That's, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. It was like that's championed disgusting. as, hell yeah. Because it's just, you wasted that. Anyway. There's a lot that just makes me so confused about that time in my life. Uh, but that was one of them where I was like, no, that doesn't this, make he's sense. getting praised for this? Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Uh, so that was weird to me. Also, like, people falling off the Why stage. Why don't they build, like, a little barrier that people can still see over? Like the like, nets at Chinese factories? up or something. Well, no, but they said they have nets, but people still fall. So, mm. like, a, like a little fence around. Like, I could, I could understand if you put like a little tiny fence, then people will be like, "Oh, I'm not gonna trip and fall over this." But it would still like fuck up your view. So just raise the seats up a little bit, and then it won't bother you. Yeah. I don't know. That's Baker says he goes to Golden Corral after the gym. I mean, yeah, you could totally get a bunch of steak, a bunch of yeah. chicken. Um. But yeah, there, there's uh, there's also like at shows now, like at big concerts and shit, there will be a barrier between the stage and the crowd, and it dips also just like that. Remember when we went to uh, Camp Pumpkin Drublick and, and we the guy got the thrown? Okay, so there over the barricade two things about and that. hit the ground before he fell. We got to the main front somehow, and. The crowd was like going back and forth, and we were getting like pushed, like our yeah. like pushed up against the barrier. Right. Then people were crowd surfing. Um, your friend got kicked in the back of the head and got very, very mad. mad. Yeah. Um, and then this one guy, whenever he was crowd surfing, he was totally fine. They pushed him over, but I guess he was a little, little messed mm -hmm. up or whatever, and didn't land very well, and just. Mm. And was fucking and unconscious for like and he was 30 right seconds. In front of, not 30 seconds. It was like two minutes. They stopped singing and everything. And they got the the medical team to like come out and get him. But I literally. And this was like a couple of thousand people too. It there wasn't. There were 20,000 people there yeah. over the weekend. Yeah. Um, But it was right in front of me. And I was like, I just kept looking at Chad. And I was like, I just watched this guy die. He's dead. Like he wasn't moving at all. Yeah. Because he was probably hammered, too. I mean, it was like a hard hit. On concrete, yeah. But, uh, so gravel. there's like that shit at concerts also. I didn't, I forgot about um, that, thanks. And, <laughs> you're welcome. I'm always here to reinforce your trauma. Jesus Christ. Um, uh, let's see. Um, I legitimately thought I, I watched someone die. Yeah, the stage stuff's pretty cool. There's always stories about fucking ghosts, ghosts in theaters though sushi. that's that's a real thing oh Sushi's my god he did he did hold on he said oh uh, you this get has to edit a little this warm video. fan Nikki's gonna edit this one Ugh. Ugh. I worked at the bear cave for mushroom head we had to stop the pit because a guy broke his leg then the singer said hey don't have enough bouncers to stop you from moshing I mean it was, it was like, everything was like pretty okay until Pennywise. Yeah, Pennywise got And then I was like, you know crazy. what? Like, I'm usually totally fine, like getting shoved mm -hmm. and pushed and punched and elbowed or whatever. But it, it made me pretty nervous. I started backing away from the circle. I was just like, why is everybody mad? Everybody but me was mad. I wasn't mad. I was scared. Everybody was fucking pissed. You're like, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, there's always like talk of, of ghosts in theaters. What's he climbing on now? Your Xbox. Sushi. No, dude. Get down. Come on. The world is my playground, father. Yeah, ghosts. There's always stories of like ghosts in theaters or like tragic deaths that have happened in auditoriums of places and everything there wasn't even a rumor in my high school that someone had like um been hung there ah uh, 
thought there was a rumor about that, not in the the auditorium, but mm -hmm. it was like the level of no, 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 the level that the auditorium was on the bathroom right beside in the See, girls' bathroom. There is, I think it's bullshit, and I don't I know if it's true. Made that stuff yeah. up. Yeah. But anyway, it's probably just like a rumor. It's like I was in every scared. theater there has to be someone who was hung here for some reason. I would it's always like, like go upstairs because uh, I was like, I'm not gonna go in there if I don't, I don't have know about to. That. But anyway, great video. Yeah. I, I hate waiting for his videos, but I know that when they do come out, they're gonna be fucking hilarious. They're gonna be badass. Yeah. So give Internet Historian some love. If you haven't subscribed to his channel yet, you should probably go do that. It'll um, be in the title of this video. It will be because we do that. Um, and so do Renegade Media Group mm -hmm. and a bunch of other cool reaction channels that aren't the shit tier ones that we get compared to. Anyway, thank you guys for hanging out, yeah. and we will see you in the next see you one. Guys. Bye.